During her distinguished career as a historian, Nell Irvin Painter has published seven books, earned a long list of honors and awards, served on editorial and academic boards, and taught several generations of students during her two decades at Princeton University, where she recently retired as the Edwards Professor of American History Emeritus. So the book I'm working on is called The History of White People. And people say, well, you know, what's that? And let me Painter tell you continues to speak and lecture. Today, she's giving a talk to some American Studies students at Princeton. And she's midway through her term as president of the Organization of American Historians. She's also under contract to complete two additional books. Well, that's what I want to put to Professor Nell Painter, one of our country's distinguished historians. And she is a sought-after talking head on news and public affairs programs. Here she is on the Bill Moyers Journal. Welcome to the journal. Thank you. Everybody's throwing around the word populism. Do you think they know what they're talking about? It sounds as if people who were throwing it around are throwing it around as a dirty word. And if it is a dirty word, they don't know what they're talking about. That would be Why a pretty full schedule for most people, retired or otherwise, but not for Nell Painter. Americans In 2007, she decided to go back to school full time as an art student. Uh -huh. She is currently a sophomore at Mason Gross School of the Arts at Rutgers, working toward a BFA. Get the excess, and then you mm -hmm. can do your buffing okay. down with that. After I decided to do this, I applied to Rutgers and I got in. And when you get in at Rutgers, they send you a little certificate to say you've been admitted. I, I had this little certificate and I was so proud. And I put it up on the wall. And about three days later, I thought, you need to have your head examined. This is so silly. This is so dumb. Why are you doing this? At your age, why are you doing this? You're just asking for trouble. You know, and it went on and on like that for about a day. And then I thought, I really want to do this. That's why. It still looks contrast. It yes. doesn't have a kind of softness yeah. of tone. Yet. Yeah. So, number one, this I is no dilettantish recreation. Little, Her goal very, very is to become a professional working artist. Mm -hmm. She's inspired in part by her mother, now in her 90s, who started a new career after retiring as an educator. My mother taught me to write, and she'd been watching me and my friends all these years writing these books, and she, she said, boy, that looks like it would be something I'd enjoy. So when she retired, she set out to write a book. It took her 10 years to write it and publish it, and it came out in 1992. And then she took another 10 years to write another book that came out 10 years later. So here was my role model, so to speak, my mother, who did something entirely different in her retirement. Does that look okay, Randy? Does that look okay? So I figure I have a good 20 years, which is okay for a career. Nell Painter had taken lots of art in high school and was briefly an art major in college, but hasn't practiced the physical skills of making art in decades. And she says it shows. My undergraduate peers, most of them are much more skilled than well, last I time I couldn't have done it without Avery. But my skills are within range. Well, it's true, isn't it? And yeah, yeah. having lived a life, I'm not trying I'm to find myself. Team. I have less to do in a way. Uh, in art school than some of my younger peers. Being a professional artist and succeeding as a professional artist isn't just a question of knowing what you're doing. Obviously you have to have, uh, you have to reach a threshold of skill and technique, but after that it's about concept and ideas and originality and what makes it you and sustaining the production of artwork. And in that way, the skills are very much akin to the skills of an academic, of a scholar. Right. Ta-da! The, the only people who have reservations about my working toward being a professional artist are my teachers. <laughs> and they, can, they have seen what I can do. <laughs> yeah, I, in her well, life as a scholar, Painter so well has frequently that. used That's art and right images here, to read I and render history, in contrast to the established around. practice of relying um, solely on written texts. The, For example, in her biography of the abolitionist Sojourner Truth. Sojourner Truth didn't read and write, so I had to learn a whole new set of skills to 
try to get to her because she didn't, everything I know of her in words is what other people wrote down for their own purposes. What did Sojourner Truth project for her own purposes? Photographs. Sojourner Truth's own portraits are very ladylike, dignified, calm, composed. That's not what we want from Sojourner Truth now. In creating Black Americans, I used images to show what people of imagination might make of an issue or a person. So uh, the favorite Sojourner Truth in creating Black Americans is Inga Hardison's <gasps> Sojourner Truth. <laughs> Ew. Now Painter is creating images of her own, of herself. Today's assignment, working with a reduced palette and a large brush in order to concentrate on light and shadow. Oh, oh, oh. People often ask me, my friends from the academic world, ask me, gee, you know, that's really great. You must be having a lot of fun. And I don't have fun in art, but it's very satisfying. Her other exercises include drawing the figure and adding layers of muscle and bone. transcribing or copying work by other artists, such as this painting of Alice Neal's portrait of artist Faith Ringgold. The reason for doing a lot is that 90% is kind of getting there, and maybe 10% is actually being there. My faculty teachers uh, have been very supportive. They love the idea of having a grown-up. And my being a grown-up in class really pleases my teachers because I come on time, I do my work, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Plus, I know how to get what I need from my professors. I go to office hours and sit there and ask the question. I'm not afraid, I'm not, and I do talk and I will disagree with my teachers. This is a self-portrait I did in the spring of 2007. And at that time, that was the best I could do. And you can see it's kind of not that bad, but it's clearly, it's clearly kind of amateur work. It's student work. And I'm still working on self-portraits. But this was the painting that my evaluators looked at and told me that I should give up trying to paint the figure because this was so inept that, <laughs> that it just had so far to go. And they didn't say, and you're so old that you don't have time, but <laughs> it was kind of like, um, give up, give up. And as you see, I haven't. I think my painting has improved uh, a good deal since then, but I'm still learning.